Magandang 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 oras po sa lahat ng mga viewers, supporters, and subscribers ng channel ko. Si Jeff the Blind Explorer. At sa puntong ito mga kaibigan, atin naman pong uh, itatampok dito sa ating channel ang kasaysayan ng pinakaunang Pangulo ng Pambansang Republika ng Pilipinas, si Presidente Emilio Aguinaldo. At sana po ay maibigan po ninyo ang aking tampok sa aking channel sa oras na ito. At sana patuloy yung suportahan ang aking mga uploaded narration stories na ina-upload ko po rito, syempre, dito sa channel ni Jeff the Blind Explorer. Para hindi po masyadong maging mahaba at maging kumpleto ang detalye ng mga narration na ito, at minabuti ko po na gumamit ng speech synthesizer para nang sa ganoon, siya na po yung babasa ng libro na itinatampo ko upang maging mas detalyado, maging concise, at maging well-explained ang aking video narration. Mga kaibigan, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Alamin natin ang kasaysayan ni President Emilio Aguinaldo kung paano niya hinawakan ang Pilipinas paano siya nagsilbi sa Pilipinas at kung paano natapos ang kanyang pagsisilbi hanggang sa panahon ng kanyang pamamaalam sa ating bayan. At kung ano pa ang kanyang mga naging accomplishment bilang isang opisyal ng ating bayan. Here it is mga kaibigan, panuorin ang kasaysayan ni President Emilio Aguinaldo. Dito lamang sa channel ni Jeff the Blind Explorer. Emilio Aguinaldo was a Filipino revolutionary, politician, and a military leader who was officially recognized as the first and the youngest president of the Philippines 1899-1901 and first president of a constitutional republic in Asia. He led Philippine forces first against Spain in the latter part of the Philippine Revolution 1896-1898 and then in the Spanish-American War 1898 and finally against the United States during the Philippine-American War 1899-1901. He was captured in Palanan, Isabella by American forces on March 23, 1901, which brought an end to his presidency. In 1935, Aguinaldo ran unsuccessfully for president of the Philippine Commonwealth against Manuel Quezon. After the Japanese invasion of the Philippines in 1941, he cooperated with the new rulers, even making a radio appeal for the surrender of the American and Filipino forces on Bataan. He was arrested as a collaborator after the Americans returned but was later freed in a general amnesty and was subsequently exonerated. Early life and career Emilio Fami Aguinaldo Sr. was born on March 22, 1869 in Cavite El Viejo, present-day Cahuit, in Cavite Province, to Carlos Jamir Aguinaldo and Trinidad Fami Aguinaldo a Tagalog Chinese mestizo couple who had eight children, the seventh of whom was Emilio Sr. The Aguinaldo family was quite well-to-do, as his father, Carlos J. Aguinaldo was the community's appointed gobernadorcio, municipal governor, in the Spanish colonial administration and his grandparents A. Eugenio K. Aguinaldo and Maria Jamir Aguinaldo. He studied at Colegio de San Juan de Latran but wasn't able to finish his studies due to outbreak of cholera in 1882. Emilio became the Cabeza de Barangay of Binacayan, a chief barrio of Cavite El Viejo, when he was only 17 years old to avoid conscription. In 1895 the Mora law that called for the reorganization of local governments was enacted. At the age of 25, Aguinaldo became Cavite El Viejo's first, Gobernadorcio Capitan Municipal, Municipal Governor Captain, while on a business trip in Mindoro. Personal life On January 1, 1896, he married Hilaria del Rosario 1877-1921, this was his third wife. They had five children, Carmen Aguinaldo Melancio, Emilio, John, R. Aguinaldo Jr., Maria Aguinaldo Pablete, Cristina Aguinaldo Sunday, and Miguel Aguinaldo. 
Hilaria died of leprosy on March 6, 1921 at the age of 44. Nine years later, on July 14, 1930, Aguinaldo married Maria Goncholo, February 15, 1879 to May 29, 1963, at Barisoan Church. She died on May 29, 1963, a year before Aguinaldo himself. His grandsons Emilio B. Aguinaldo III and Reynaldo Aguinaldo served three terms as mayor, 2007-2016, and vice mayor of his hometown Kawit, Cavite, respectively. One of his great-grandsons, Joseph Emilio Abaya, was a member of the Philippine House of Representatives representing Cavite's first district, which contained their hometown, Kawit, from 2004 until his appointment as Secretary of Transportation and Communications in 2012, a post he served until 2016, while another great-grandson, Emilio, Orange, M. Aguinaldo IV, married AB CBN News reporter Bernadette Sembrano in 2007. Revolutionary and political career Philippine Revolution and battles On January 1, 1895, Aguinaldo became a Freemason, joining Pilar Lodge No. 203, Imus, Cavite by the codename, Colon. He would later say, the successful revolution of 1896 was masonically inspired, led, and executed, and I venture to say that the first Philippine Republic of which I was its humble president, was an achievement we owe largely to masonry and the masons. The seal of the Magdalo faction led by Baldomero B. Aquinaldo Emilio's first cousin. On March 7, 1895, Santiago Alvarez whose father was a Capitan Municipal Mayor of Noveleta encouraged Aguinaldo to join the Catapunin, a secret organization led by Andres Bonifacio, dedicated to the expulsion of the Spanish and independence of the Philippines through armed force. Aguinaldo joined the organization and used the nom de guerre Magdalo, in honor of Mary Magdalene. The local chapter of Catapunin in Cavite was established and named Sengunyang Magdalo, and Aguinaldo's cousin Baldomero Aguinaldo was appointed leader. The Catapunin-led Philippine revolution against the Spanish began in the last week of August 1896 in San Juan del Monte now part of Metro Manila. However, Aguinaldo and other Cavite rebels initially refused to join in the offensive alleging lack of arms. While Bonifacio and other rebels were forced to resort to guerrilla warfare, Aguinaldo and the Cavite rebels won major victories in set-piece battles, temporarily driving the Spanish out of their area. Battle of Imus in August 1896, as coordinated attacks broke out and sparked the revolution beginning in Manila. Emilio Aguinaldo marched from Cahuit with 600 men and launched a series of skirmishes at Imus which eventually ended in open hostilities against Spanish troops stationed there. On September 1, with the aid of Captain José Tagle of Imus, they laid siege against Imus estate to draw the Spanish out. A Spanish relief column commanded by Brig. General Ernesto de Aguirre had been dispatched from Manila to aid the beleaguered Spanish defenders of Imus. Supported only by a hundred troops and by a cavalry, Aguirre gave the impression that he had been sent out to suppress a minor disturbance. Aguinaldo and his men counter-attacked but suffered heavy losses and almost cost his own life. Despite the success, Aguirre did not press the attack and felt the inadequacy of his troops and hastened back to Manila to get reinforcements. During the lull in the fighting, Aguinaldo's troops reorganized and prepared for another Spanish attack. On September 3, Aguirre came back with a much larger force of 3,000 men. When Spanish troops arrived at the Isabel II Bridge, they were fired upon by the concealed rebels. As surprise was on the side of the revolutionaries, almost all the Spaniards that were sent there were trapped and annihilated, among them was General Aguirre. Twin battles of Binacay and Dalahican alarmed by previous siege, led by General Aguinaldo in Imus, Cavite in September 1896, Governor-General Ramon Blanco y Arenas ordered the 4th Battalion of Cazadores from Spain to aid him in quelling the rebellion in Cavite. On November 3, 1896, the battalion arrived carrying a squadron of 1,328 men and some 55 officers. Apart from that, Blanco ordered about 144,000 men who recently came from Cuba and Spain to join in suppressing the rebellion. 
Prior to the land attacks, Spanish naval raids were conducted on the shores of Cavite, where cannonballs were bombarded against the revolutionary fortifications in Bacoor, Novaleta, Binacayan and Cavite Viejo. The most fortified locations in Novaleta are the Dalahican and Dagatan shores defended by Magdawang soldiers under the command of General Santiago Alvarez, while the adjacent fishing village of Binacayan in Cahuit was fortified by Magdalo under General. Emilio Aguinaldo. Spanish naval operations were determined to crush the fortifications in these areas, mainly because the lake around Dalahican was so strategic as it connects to the interior of Cavite. Apart from defending Binacayan, the Magdalo soldiers also kept the lower part of Dagatan up to Cavite's border near Morong Province, now Rizal Province 20. On November 9, 1896, Spanish forces laid simultaneous attacks on the two fortified rebel strongholds with many Spaniards losing their lives. At each advancement, more Spanish soldiers were killed, including the officers. Aguinaldo then ordered his soldiers to counterattack at the right moment with the most number of men available for the engagement, and so they did. Huge numbers of Catapuneros rushed into the fight, swarming into several enemy units until one by one they were destroyed piecemeal. When the surviving Spaniards saw that their officers were killed by the defense of Binacayan, they were demoralized with many retreating back to their ships while some of them headed back to Manila, thus, terminating the attack in Binacayan. The Filipinos were in hot pursuit over the enemy, killing stragglers in the process, and it resulted in an utter rout for the Spanish and scattered them apart. The attack on Filipino positions by the Spaniards at Dalahican completely failed, suffering more than 1,000 casualties in the process, and by nightfall on November 11, the battle was over. They tried to retreat back towards Manila at the end of the battle, but, now cut off from Manila due to Filipino victory at Binacayan, fell back instead to Cavite City. Alvarez's revolutionaries, including those commanded by Aguinaldo who quickly joined the fray after Binacayan as reinforcements, pursued the retreating Spanish and for a while besieged Cavite City, where many Spanish soldiers surrendered to Aguinaldo. Battle of Zapote Bridge The newly appointed Governor-General Camilo de Palavieja now fully aware that the main weight of the revolution is in Cavite, decided to launch a two-pronged assault which will defeat the revolutionaries led by Aguinaldo. He ordered General José de Lachamber with a much bigger force to march against Salang to take on the Catapuneros from the rear, while he himself will engage the Filipinos head-on. On February 17, 1897, Aguinaldo ordered soldiers to plant dynamite along the bridge and place pointed bamboo sticks in the river beds below the bridge. Several hours later, 12,000 Spaniards began to cross the bridge. The trap was sprung and the dynamite was detonated, killing several Spanish troops and injuring many more. The rebels then emerged from the bushes and fought hand to hand, repelling consecutive waves of enemy troops charging across the river. During this fight Edelberto Evangelista was shot in the head and died. The province of Cavite gradually emerged as the revolution's hotbed, and the Aguinaldo-led Catapuneros had a string of victories there. After the battle, the demoralized Spanish soldiers retreated towards Muntinlupa. Spanish Cavite Offensive and the Battle of Perez das Mariñas On February 15, 1897 the Spaniards launched the powerful Cavite Offensive to drive and crush Filipino revolutionaries under General Emilio Aguinaldo and his Magdalo forces which held numerous victories against the Spanish in the early stages of the revolution. Renewed and fully equipped with 100 cannons, 23,000 Spanish Cazadores forces under Major General José de Lachamber have seen town after town, falling back to the crown. Starting the offensive at Pamplona, Cavite and Bayungungan, Batangas, Lachamber's men would later march deep into the heart of Aguinaldo's home province. Having just won the Battle of Zapote, Aguinaldo turned his attention at the new Spanish threat determined to recapture most of Cavite. Aguinaldo decided to deploy his forces at Pasong Santal that serves as a bottleneck of Perez das Mariñas on the way to Imus rendering the Spanish lack of mobility and serving the revolutionaries with natural defensive positions. On February 19, Salang fell to the Spanish juggernaut despite attempts by Filipino forces to defend and then later, recover it. 
Nine days later, Spanish forces marched into Dasmarinas to reclaim the town. The week after, Spanish troops with good use of artillery pieces they brought along were on the attack again as they moved towards the Aguinaldo's capital, Imus. Meanwhile, at the Tejeros Convention, Emilio was voted in absentia as the president of the reorganized revolutionary government. Colonel Vicente Riego de Dios was sent by the assembly to fetch General Emilio Aguinaldo who was then in Pasong Santal. The general refused to come, so Crispulo was then sent to talk to his brother. He greeted and talked to his brother and explained his purpose, but Emilio was hesitant to leave his post because of the pending attack of the Spanish in Dasmarinas. In March 1897, a stalemated battle between the revolutionary army of Crispulo Aguinaldo, while taking over General Emilio Aguinaldo's leadership in battle, and the Spanish forces, led by José de la Chamber, occurred in this trail. The Filipinos' resistance was tenacious as ever, refusing to give ground but the far more disciplined Spaniards advanced steadily. Emilio Aguinaldo realizing the size of the enemy and the danger of the situation, sent Magdalo troops to reinforce the threatened salient but Supremo Andres Bonifacio summoned Magdawang troops under Artemio Ricarte to intercept the Magdalo troops to Pasong Santal thus preventing help to the revolutionary soldiers, citing he needed the soldiers elsewhere. The Spaniards pressed the offensive achieving tactical superiority which led to the massacre of the Filipino soldiers, including Aguinaldo's brother. The Spaniards only captured this salient after Crispulo was killed during the battle, and the rebels promptly broke off the engagement and reorganized inside the town. Exploiting the gap among the revolutionaries, the Spaniards decisively defeated the Magdalo forces. Tejeros Convention and the execution of Bonifacio conflict within the ranks of the Catapunan factions, and specifically between the Magdalo and Magdawang, led to Bonifacio's intervention in the province of Cavite. The rebels of Cavite was rumored to have made overtures about establishing a revolutionary government in place of the Catapunan. Though Bonifacio acknowledged the existence of the considered Catapunan as a government, he acquiesced and presided over a convention held on March 22, 1897 in Tejeros, Cavite. The Republic of the Philippines was proclaimed, with Aguinaldo being elected as president, Mariano Trias as vice president, Artemio Ricarte as captain general, Emiliano Riego de Dios as the director of war and Andres Bonifacio was elected director of the interior. The results were questioned by Daniel Torona for Bonifacio's qualifications for that position, Bonifacio was insulted and declared. I, as chairman of this assembly, and as president of the Supreme Council of the Catapunan, as all of you do not deny, declare this assembly dissolved, and I annul all that has been approved and resolved. Bonifacio refused to recognize the revolutionary government headed by Aguinaldo and reasserted his authority, accusing the Magdalo faction of treason and issued orders contravening orders issued by the Aguinaldo's faction. In April 1897, Aguinaldo ordered the arrest of Bonifacio on some information alleging Bonifacio's involvement in some events at Indong. After the trials Andres and his brother Procopio were ordered to be executed by firing squad under the command of General Lazaro Macapagal on May 10, 1897 at Mount Buntis, Maragondon, Cavite facts leading to Bonifacio's execution to this day remains questionable as Emilio Aguinaldo had opted to have the Bonifacio brothers immediately exiled rather than have them executed. Retreat to Montalban having lost to the Spanish forces several weeks after at the Battle of Perez Dasmarinas, Aguinaldo's rearguard fought delaying action against Spanish spearheads until troops and stragglers retreated southwest of Cavite. In late May 1897, with good concealment of retreating soldiers, Aguinaldo managed to evade the Spanish to establish link up with General Maimerto Natividad. With the revolutionaries overwhelmed in Cavite, Natividad was commissioned to look for a place of retreat. He found Biak na Bato. The Spanish pursued the Catapunero forces retreating towards central Luzon, killing many of the revolutionaries. However, some of them joined General Manuel Tinio's revolutionary army in Nueva Ecija, where they decisively won the Battle of Aliaga, the glorious battle of the rebellion, only a few weeks after the retreat. 
Biak na Bato the Spanish army launched an attack which forced the revolutionary forces under Aguinaldo into a retreat. On June 24, 1897 Aguinaldo arrived at Biak na Bato in San Miguel, Bulacan, and established a headquarters there, located in Biak na Bato National Park in what is now known as Aguinaldo Cave. In late October 1897, Aguinaldo convened an assembly of generals at Biak na Bato, where it was decided to establish a constitutional republic. A constitution patterned closely after the Cuban constitution was drawn up by Isabello Artico and Felix Ferrer. The constitution provided for the creation of a supreme council composed of a president, a vice president, a secretary of war, and a secretary of the treasury. Aguinaldo was named president. From March 1897, Fernando Primo de Rivera, first Marquis of Estella, the Spanish Governor General of the Philippines, had been encouraging prominent Filipinos to contact Aguinaldo for a peaceful settlement of the conflict. On August 9, Manila lawyer Pedro Paterno met with Aguinaldo at Biak na Bato with a proposal for peace based on reforms and amnesty. In succeeding months, Paterno conducted shuttle diplomacy, acting as an intermediary between de Rivera and Aguinaldo. On December 14, 1897 Aguinaldo signed the Pact of Biak na Bato, under which Aguinaldo effectively agreed to end hostilities and dissolve his government in exchange for amnesty and 800,000 pesos Mexican, Aguinaldo's description of the amount as an indemnity. The documents were signed on December 14, 1897. On December 23, Aguinaldo and other revolutionary officials departed for Hong Kong to enter voluntary exile. 400,000 pesos, representing the first installment of the indemnity, was deposited into Hong Kong banks. While in exile, Aguinaldo reorganized his revolutionary government into the so-called Hong Kong Junta, and enlarging it into the Supreme Council of the Nation. Return to the Philippines and Philippine Declaration of Independence. On April 25, the Spanish-American War began. While the war mostly focused on Cuba, the United States Navy's Asiatic Squadron was in Hong Kong, and commanded by Commodore George Dewey, it sailed for the Philippines. On May 1, 1898, in the Battle of Manila Bay, the squadron engaged and destroyed the Spanish Navy's Pacific Squadron and proceeded to blockade Manila. Several days later, Dewey agreed to transport Aguinaldo from Hong Kong to the Philippines aboard the USS McCulloch, which left Hong Kong with Aguinaldo on 16 May. Arriving in Cavite on 19 May, Aguinaldo promptly resumed command of revolutionary forces and besieged Manila. On May 24, 1898 in Cavite, Aguinaldo issued a proclamation in which he assumed command of all Philippine forces and established a dictatorial government with himself as dictator. On May 28, 1898, Aguinaldo gathered a force of about 18,000 troops and fought against a small garrison of Spanish troops in Ilapan, Imus, Cavite. The battle lasted for five hours, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. after the victory at Alapan, Aguinaldo unfurled the Philippine flag for the first time, and hoisted it at the Teatro Caviteño in Cavite Nuevo, present-day Cavite City, in front of Filipino revolutionaries and more than 300 captured Spanish troops. A group of American sailors of the U.S. Asiatic Squadron also witnessed the unfurling. Flag Day is celebrated every May 28 in honor of this battle. On June 12 Aguinaldo issued the Philippine Declaration of Independence from Spain and on June 18, he issued a decree formally establishing his dictatorial government. On June 23, Aguinaldo issued a decree replacing his dictatorial government with a revolutionary government, with himself as president. First Philippine President The First Philippine Republic was formally established with the proclamation of the Malolos Constitution on January 21, 1899 in Malolos, Bulacan and endured until the capture of Emilio Aguinaldo by the American forces on March 23, 1901 in Palanan, Isabella, which effectively dissolved the First Republic. Philippine-American War On August 12, 1898, 
American forces captured Manila during the Battle of Manila and on August 14, 1898 established the United States military government of the Philippine Islands, with Major General Wesley Merritt as the first American military governor. On the night of February 4, 1899, a Filipino was shot by an American sentry. This incident was considered to be the beginning of the Philippine-American War, and culminated in the 1899 Battle of Manila between American and Filipino forces. Superior American technology drove Filipino troops away from the city, and Aguinaldo's government had to move from one place to another as the military situation escalated. Aguinaldo led the resistance against the Americans but retreated to northern Luzon. On November 13, 1899, Emilio Aguinaldo disbanded the regular Filipino army and decreed that guerrilla war would henceforth be the strategy. On March 23, 1901, with the aid of Maccabeep scouts, led by General Frederick Funston, Aguinaldo was captured in his headquarters in Palanan, Isabella. One of these forces was led by General Macario Sake who established the Tagalog Republic. On April 19, 1901, Aguinaldo took an oath of allegiance to the United States, formally ending the First Republic and recognizing the sovereignty of the United States over the Philippines. After the capture of Aguinaldo, some Filipino commanders continued the revolution. On July 30, 1901 General Miguel Malvar issued a manifesto saying, forward, without ever turning back. All wars of independence have been obliged to suffer terrible tests. General Malvar surrendered to U.S. forces in Lipa, Batangas on April 16, 1902. The war was formally ended by a unilateral proclamation of general amnesty by U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt on July 4, 1902. Post-presidency American era during the American period, Aguinaldo supported groups that advocated for immediate independence and helped veterans of the struggle. He organized the Asociación de los Veteranos de la Revolución Association of Veterans of the Revolution to secure pensions for its members and made arrangements for them to buy land on installment from the government. Displaying the Philippine flag was declared illegal by the Sedition Act of 1907. However, the act was amended on October 30, 1919. Following this, Aguinaldo transformed his home in Cawit into a monument to the flag, the revolution and the declaration of independence. As of 2015 update, his home still stands and is known as the Aguinaldo Shrine. Aguinaldo retired from public life for many years. In 1935, when the Commonwealth of the Philippines was established in preparation for Philippine independence, he ran for president in the Philippine presidential election, 1935, but lost by a landslide to Manuel L. Quezon. The two men formally reconciled in 1941, when President Quezon moved Flag Day to June 12, to commemorate the proclamation of Philippine independence. During the Japanese occupation of the Philippines during World War II, Aguinaldo cooperated with the Japanese, making speeches, issuing articles and radio addresses in support of the Japanese, including a radio appeal to General Douglas MacArthur on Corregidor to surrender in order to spare the innocence of the Filipino youth. He explained his action by saying, I was just remembering the fight I led. We were outnumbered, too, in constant retreat. I saw my own soldiers die without affecting future events. To me that seemed to be what was happening on Bataan, and it seemed like a good thing to stop. After the combined American and Filipino troops retook the Philippines in 1945, Aguinaldo was arrested along with several others accused of collaboration with the Japanese, and jailed for some months in Bilibid prison. He was released by presidential amnesty. Aguinaldo was 77 when the United States government recognized Philippine independence in the Treaty of Manila on July 4, 1946, in accordance with the Tidings McDuffie Act of 1934. Death and Legacy Aguinaldo was rushed to Veterans Memorial Medical Center in Quezon City on October 5, 1962, under the care of DRA. Juana Blanco Fernandez, M.D., where he stayed there for 469 days until he died of coronary thrombosis at age 94 on February 6, 1964. A year before his death, he donated his lot and mansion to the government. 
This property now serves as a shrine to perpetuate the spirit of the revolution of 1896. In 1964, he published his book, MGA Ganita ng Hamagsikan, Memoirs of the Revolution. A second publication was made in 1998 during the 100th year anniversary of Philippine independence. In 1985, Benco Central ng Pilipinas issued a new 5 peso bill depicting a portrait of Aguinaldo on the front. The back features the declaration of the Philippine independence on June 12, 1898. Printing was discontinued in 1996, when it was replaced with a 5 pesos coin one year earlier BSP series, since the bill printed starting 1993 which also belongs in this series and concurrently produced starting 1995-1996 which is the reason whose obverse features a portrait of Aguinaldo. Source, List of Presidents of the Philippines, Wikipedia, HTML.